a kind of series of questions. Um, these were each worth one point apiece. Uh, Bronsted Lowry definition of an acid is a proton donor. Base is a proton acceptor. Um, for C, I wanted you to give me two strong acids, and there's the six strong acids we talked about. Um, for D, come back here. For D, you needed to give me a strong base, and you could have gone, uh, these are the strong bases I think of, basically hydroxide salts, uh, proton acceptor. Um, question E, um, this is where you had to do a little bit of calculation just for one point. Um, I gave you the pKa, a benzoic acid, and I wanted you to tell me what the Kb of its conjugate base was, um, benzoate ion. And so, of course, there's this relationship between conjugate acid base pair, Ka times Kb is equal to Kw, so that um, we can actually then knock out, uh, wait, first we have to go ahead and unpack that pKa. We need to get Ka from that. And we can get that Ka from that if we take um, 10 raised to the negative pKa. So that's our Ka. And then we take um, Kw over Ka to get uh, Kb. Um, so then the last one on there is um, we talk about um, at 25 degrees Celsius, Kw is that 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th. Well, at a colder temperature, it's even less. And so I wanted you to tell me what the, hydro the hydronium cation concentration is at that temperature. And it's just the square root of that value, basically. Because um, it's ionizing, okay? And so Kw, we know, is the product of the molar concentration of these two things. So with a lower Kw, okay, basically we just need to take the square root of 2.9 times 10 to the negative 15th. And so the molar concentration is 4 point, excuse me, 5.4 times 10 to the minus 8th. Um, on to the next page. Um, the first one up there was, and these were worth each three points apiece. Um, I wanted you to, to kind of describe what the pH would be and why uh, if you took a strong acid and reacted with a strong base. And um, it's pH 7, but the reason is is because you have equal number of hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion. Um, question, oops, yeah, question 3. So what if instead of a strong acid, what if you had a weak acid and a strong base? What pH would that be and why? And so, um, actually, that would be uh, basic. But the reason it's basic is because of that conjugate base of the weak acid is, is driving the pH. Question four, um, this is one where actually you would have needed to do it right, what I was after anyway, was for you to remember, um, if somebody has a target pH like that, that, and you have a table like you have in your, for your exam, you basically look up and find a pKa that's close to that pH because the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, HH equation, your target uh, pH should be near your pKa. And so that's basically what I did. So you can kind of see, um, at first I said um, if you pick oxalic acid, that will give you the best, uh, you know, buffer around pH 1.2, um, malonic acid. If you look at it, it's a better choice because um, its Ka value is 1.5 times 10 negative third. So the pKa is 2.8, which is pretty close to your target pH. Okay, so if anybody um, asks you to go to make a buffered solution um, and you have a table of, of Ka values, find the pKa and make the pKa next to the target pH. Um, so that was what I was after there. The next page, question five, um, actually these are all related, right? Um, each worth two points apiece. And instead of um, water auto-ionizing, I wanted you to describe how two moles of ammonia could do a similar thing. So what happens with ammonia is kind of like what happens with water, is one of the ammonia molecules will accept a proton and then will donate a proton. So then on the product side, you get the ammonium cation and the NH2 minus. So the, these are acting kind of as the auto-ionization of water. So from that, then, you could answer B. So some of these were related. Um, so the K, AM, K of ammonia, so the KW is KAM, 
would be basically the molar concentrations of these times each other. Um, and then given the K um, AM, uh, a value of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 33rd at a given temperature, um, what would the pKAM of that be? So basically, you're going to apply the p function, take negative log of that, okay, and get plus 33.00. Um, on down to the next one. Um, D is what would be the molar concentration at that temperature that we know the p the p k a m of, and basically you're going to take the square root of that um, k a m, not p k a m, the square root of k a m, to get the molar concentration. Um, so what would the p function of the ammonia ion be at that temperature? Um, take a the negative log of that number that you got in D, and then for question F. Um, what would be the relationship between the pKAM and the P? This should, should be actually a little plus up there, I think. Unless I'm missing something. A little minus there. What would be the re relationship between these? Um, and it would be that actually you add the P uh, ammonia plus the P NH2 minus um, would be equal to the pKAM. So it's just kind of a trying to, to kind of maneuver around in a different way to what we usually use is the um, autoionization of water. All right, next page. Um, okay, so given this uh, uh, series of reactants and products, I asked you some questions, um, for instance, identify the Bronsted acid, um, and that would be the proton donor, HCN is the proton donor, Bron Bronsted base, and actually this is an equilibrium, it's one way, so the base would be the proton acceptor, would be the hydroxide ion, the salt would be the potassium cyanide on the product side, um, one conjugate base pair, so actually separated by a colon, you can see I've identified the two conjugate base pairs. The spectator ion would be the potassium. It doesn't really do anything. It's just along for the ride. Um, the weak base actually then would be um, on the product side. It would be the conjugate of the weak acid, which was HCN. So CN minus is the weak base. So down here for question number seven, um, I gave you a curve, a titration curve between a weak acid and a strong base, kind of like you guys did in lab, and asked you a few point, few questions. The equivalence point is I marked there A on the graph. So actually, um, it's a give the volume at which the equivalence point occurs. And so I put about 21 milliliters. Um, the point where pH is equal to pKa, that's the half neutralization point. So if it's 21 mils, then we're uh, looking at uh, 10.5 milliliters as the volume at which pH is equal to pKa. Now remember, at, the, at that half neutralization point, referred to in B, at that point actually you still have half of your weak acid left, okay, and half of it's been converted to your conjugate base. So actually the molar concentration of your um, HA and your A- minus are the same. That's why that's, that all kind of works that way. So with that in mind, um, C says, where um, does that pH pr principally depend upon the excess base added? Um, that would actually be after the equivalence point, so greater than 21 mils. Um, where is HB um, less than, or excuse me, where is HB greater than B minus? That would actually be half before the neutralization point at 10.5 um, mils, so something before that. The region where um, you best get a buffered solution, so you don't want to get too close to um, having none of your weak acid left, and you don't want to have get too early on in the titration where you have none of your conjugate base formed. So I put 5 to 15 milliliters. So that's what I was after there. Is there one more here? No. Okay. Um, next page. 
So you can kind of see what I suggested, and I saw a lot of you do this, kind of identify what these are um, and then answer the question. So ammonia is a weak base. Ammonium chloride, the NH4+, plus, um, is a conjugate acid of a weak base. Formic acid, weak acid. Um, HCl, strong acid. Um, KCl is just a salt. Um, potassium formate, the formate ion actually is the conjugate base of a weak acid. And sodium, potassium hydroxide, excuse me, is a strong base. So which one would have the highest pH? That would be your strong base, potassium hydroxide. Which would have the lowest pH? That would be your strong acid, HCl. Um, which one is neutral? That would be your salt, potassium chloride. Um, D, which one would be basic but, but still close to 7? So that would be your conjugate base of a weak acid. So that is your potassium formate. Um, e, which would be acidic, but it would still have a pH pretty close to um, 7. That would be your conjugate acid of a weak base, and that was your ammonium cation. Um, and F, which one would have the highest concentration of H, um, H3O plus? That's your hydronium cation. That's the same thing as saying H plus. That would be your strong acid, the one that has the lowest pH, F. F is also HCl. Um, on to the next page. All right. So in this case, um, you were given a strong acid and a strong base, and you were asked to find the, bless you, um, those four things about the solution, the hydrogen ion, the hydroxide ion concentration, pH, and the pOH. So one of the things I did at first was to um, kind of see where I was at in the type, not really titration, but um, in the tilly tally of uh, hydrogen ion versus hydroxide, notice we do end up with more hydrogen ion than a hydroxide ion. Okay, so we're going to have, it's going to be acidic. So um, to see um, how much of the HCl would be consumed, I use the um, millimoles of NaOH. So that's what's going to be consumed. How many millimoles of HCl remaining? By difference, we can get that 4.04 millimoles of HCl remaining. So that is, and there's no um, OH minus left because it got all used up. So um, then that's the millimoles running around in the total volume of 39.2 milliliters. So then the molarity of the HCl is 0.103 molar. And since um, HCl is a strong acid, that's also the hydrogen ion concentration. So that's one of the four things we needed to get, 0.103 molar. And then it came to, however you wanted to do that, to knock out the hydroxide ion concentration, the pH and the pOH. So I went for the hydroxide ion concentration next, 9.81 times 10 to the minus 14th. The pH was negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, 0.987. And the pOH I got by difference uh, from 14. So that's that one. Counting those beans. Um, this one, um, a 0.14 molar solution of acetic acid. So it's a weak acid, and I went up and I went ahead and wrote the equilibrium constant expression and the Ka for that. Um, so this one you needed to use an ice table for. So um, you can kind of see, um, ultimately, if you apply the simplifying assumption that the amount that ionizes X is sufficiently um, smaller than the, what you started with, 0.14, then actually your Ka expression boils down to x squared over 0.14. So solving for x squared, x squared is uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus third. So to get the pH then, that's actually the hydrogen ion concentration. Um, so we can do that next. pH would be negative log of that number. Um, the next one, um, all right. Was the concentration um, of ammonia in H3 um, if you have a buffered solution and the buffered solution is at a known um, pH of 9.05. So we know the target pH, it's not a target, it's what it is. Um, and you need to backtrack and get to the molar concentration of the NH3, the base in this case. So we kind of had to do a little bit of massaging of the NH3 to get the pKa of NH4+. Plus. Okay. Um, 
that's done down here. Okay, so we were given KB of NH3, um, and we can knock out the uh, PKB is 4.74. Um, if you add PKB plus PKA, which is what we want, we get PKW, which that's 14.00. Um, by difference, then, the value for um, that we're going to use in the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation for PKA is 9.22. So then, turning our attention to the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, um, we said that this is kind of a nice form. The molarity or moles of base over the molarity or moles of acid is equal to 10 raised to the, to the pH minus pKa. So we know these two things. We're trying to solve for the molar concentration of the base. Um, so the molar concentration of the acid was given, a 0.155 uh, molar. So we multiply that times 10 raised to the pH minus uh, pKa, and you get 0.096 moles per liter. Not my best penmanship, but it will do. All right, and then on to this one. Um, so at the, the information was given at the equivalence point. So at the equivalence point, basically you have used up all of your um, acetic acid and sodium hydroxide the thing that's driving the pH of the solution at the equivalence point must just be the presence of this acetate ion. So, um, in order to um, in order to get to the pH of this, we ultimately need to come up with the molar concentration of the acetate ion. So that's kind of what all this blah 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 says. So the millimoles of um, uh, acetic acid. Uh, you end up with 6.88 millimoles of acetic acid from the volume and molarity. Um, so that must also be the millimoles of acetate formed because they react on a one-to-one -one basis. The molarity of the acetate ion then would be that 6.88 millimoles divided by the total solution volume, which is 56.4 milliliters. So now, basically, it turns into what is the pH of a solution that is 0.122 molar um, acetate. So here is the equilibrium constant expression for the acetate ion showing it hydrolyzing water. And so the um, uh, notice I didn't make my columns very clear, but this column is right here. This is this column. Okay, this is this column, and this is this column, my ice table. Okay, so to get the pH, I'm going to have to come up with a hydroxide ion concentration. If we apply the simplifying assumption that we've used a lot, if X is significantly smaller than that 0.122, then your Ka expression becomes um, pretty doable, okay, like that. Actually, it's a KB expression, isn't it? So solving for X, X is equal to 8.3 times 10 to the minus 6th. Again, that's your hydroxide ion concentration. So to get to pH, we can do it a number of ways, but what I did was take um, the hyd hydrogen ion concentration is KW divided by um, hydroxide ion concentration um, to get the hydrogen ion concentration, and then um, knock out the pH by taking negative log of that. So, yeah, that was a good one. Um, it's not posted um, on the under doc sharing, but it will be by this weekend. Let me talk 